Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the PowerPal Home Energy Monitor. We talk a little bit about uh, what it is, some pros and cons of the unit and whether or not I think that it's useful in a home assistant context. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. In a previous video, I reviewed the Eagle 200 Smart Meter Bridge from Rainforest Automation, and I'm still using that unit to this day. But I've started noticing more and more of these PowerPal units showing up on top of meter boxes in my area, and also my in-laws recently moved into a house that has one of these units, and that kind of piqued my curiosity a little bit. I've been unsure how to connect to it to track the data, but I did a little bit more digging and I found out that the state government here in Victoria was subsidizing these units 100%. So I decided to order one because it was free and it was an interesting idea. It took around about six weeks to get the appointment for a technician to come around to install the PowerPal for free. And I've had the unit for about three months now, so I've had a pretty reasonable opportunity to figure out the pros and cons of the PowerPal unit. So let's start by talking about what it is. It is just this tiny little unit that sits on, in, or near your meter box, and it has this small sensor at the end of a cable, and I'm pretty sure this is a photodiode on here. And this uh, photodiode sits over the flashing LEDs on your smart meter, and it then counts those flashes from the LED coming into it to figure out how much energy you're using at any given time. There is a companion app that goes along with the PowerPal so you can visualize your energy usage and get reports, which also make calculations about your energy cost. Now it's worth mentioning here that the PowerPal connects to your mobile phone using Bluetooth low energy, which unfortunately also means that it doesn't connect directly to your Wi-Fi network. The PowerPal can log up to 90 days of data and then that data can be exported from the app to a CSV file for further analysis. And we'll take a look at that when we explore the app itself. There's an article on the PowerPal FAQ page for the CSV export method, which also mentions the possibility of an upcoming Bluetooth low energy to network bridge to enable an API to extract data from the PowerPal to Home Assistant or IFTTT. And IFTTT is an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. You can sign up on the FAQ page to express interest in taking part in the beta for the API, which I've already done because of course I did. Any opportunity to explore an API, especially for energy usage data, is a good learning opportunity and the more data I've got, the better. Rightly or wrongly, that does lead me now to start talking about the pros and cons of the PowerPal unit. Now the pros, in Victoria at least, it's free. If you're not in Victoria though, the RRP of this unit is $129. And that seems a little bit steep for what it is, but we'll discuss that later. The unit is pretty small and unobtrusive and it is self-powered. So you don't need to add any extra power into the unit, run uh, ethernet cables, anything like that to it. As I mentioned before, it connects using Bluetooth low energy, which means if your mobile phone is not around, you can't get data from it. And with that Bluetooth low energy, if the external bridge does come along, there's going to be extra cost to purchase that external bridge. Now, at least here in Victoria, when you opt in to the program to get these for free, an experienced technician will come around and attach it to your smart meter with the uh, supplied uh, plastic 
double adhesive clips, uh, which the uh, photodiode sensor just kind of uh, locks into and twists into place. There's a bunch of different clips that come with the device as well, so it can fit on any of the major smart meters that are available. On the cons side, again, there's no API yet, which means that there's no Home Assistant integration. But on the pros side, the app itself has a pretty nice UI, but obviously the hardware and the software is all proprietary. And so there's no source code that we can look at to do more detail out of. The app does send you weekly reports and that weekly report includes an estimate of your total consumption cost over that period of time. Uh, but it only reads consumption data and that is one of the key cons that I have seen with these units. Uh, because of the way it's reading the flashing lights, those flashing lights don't output any information about any feed-in tariff, any, uh, any return to the grid. So if you do have rooftop solar installed, this unit isn't going to actually provide you any information about what you're feeding back into the grid. If you're familiar with these units, by all means, if you think I've missed any of the pros and cons, please do let me know in the comments section down below. Now I did mention that it does have a nice app UI, so let's take a look at the app now and I've got it open here. So right on the front screen here, this is where the app normally opens to. You see that we've got a representation of our energy usage throughout the day. And if I tap and kind of hold and scrub through here, we can kind of see in 15 minute blocks, uh, an estimate of our power usage and how much our cost is per hour. So uh, obviously here between you know 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., I wasn't producing any solar because uh, obviously the sun wasn't out. But as we start to get past kind of 8 a.m., we start to see the consumption drop fairly significantly. You know, at 8.15, we've got 88 watts. So the solar output was really starting to cover the bulk of my usage. And then at nine o'clock, the usage dropped to zero watts. A little bit of usage at 9.15, uh, nothing at 9.30, and then we started using a bit more energy. So we started turning things on uh, and uh, there was some vacuuming and some uh, washing machine going on around this time as well. And so you can start to see the consumption that is showing up there. So even if you do have rooftop solar, you can still get some interesting data out of this app to kind of see roughly where you are using energy. And obviously uh, this changes a fair bit throughout the day uh, as the sun uh, comes in and out from behind the clouds. It's not a particularly sunny day here today. So there's not a lot of this kind of zero usage. If we uh, go back to yesterday, there was a fair bit more sun uh, and we used a lot less energy. So pretty much right from, you know, this uh, 9.30 a.m. through to uh, you know, through till 12.15, uh, that would have been when we were heating up lunch with the microwave, and then, you know, right through till, um, you know, 4.30ish, um, there was almost no usage, it actually started raining around about 4.30 yesterday, so um, you can see uh, that we've got some good data in here. Uh, so if we tap in the top right hand corner, we then have a chart so we can see uh, over time, uh, over the course of the day, we can see our charted usage uh, and get an idea of roughly what our load is over time. We can tap in the top right corner there again and get a bar graph to see uh, throughout the day. Uh, and if we tap one more time in the top right, we get a table of our consumption. Uh, in the top left corner, we've got the gear and we can tap that and we can see the PowerPal hardware details and we can tap manage and we can do things like factory reset uh, and, uh, you know, look at the um, signal strength, etc., flashes per kilowatt hour, uh, etc., um, if we need to change any of that, but we probably want to leave those at the defaults. Uh, we can change things like our energy tariff details in here. Um, those will be calculated by looking at your bill. Uh, and there's some other app settings here. If we go back to home and uh, I'll just tap back to get this view again, uh, just for fun. So we can tap on challenges now and we can see we've got some different 
uh, things that we can do, uh, we can earn $5 for each friend or neighbor who has a free power pal installed. Um, if you like, I can put a link in the video description down below for any Victorians who want a free power pal. Uh, if I tap on guidance here, we can also see our weekly report so we can see our power for the past seven days and scroll through here and see roughly what our costs are. So 49% of our bill is stuff that is always on. So things like the fridge, um, my network rack, my server, those kinds of things. So I could probably do some work to try and reduce the cost of those things because that's 629 watts throughout the entire week. We can see when we used our power. So uh, biggest day this week was last Saturday. I think we plugged the car in to charge on that day. Um, which would make sense uh, and then we can see what our average kind of day looks like and we can see that it peaks just after six uh, around 6 7 p.m obviously the sun goes down and that's pretty standard for most homes uh, and we can also see if we're using power at the best time only 41 percent of my power is used during peak times but that makes up 53 percent of my weekly spend uh, so back to guidance and we can see we've got things like closing the doors and windows to reduce the costs of heating and cooling so there's some ideas and saving energy when washing, washing and drying clothes there's some ideas on how to do that to save some money every year uh, and we can also export the data so if we tap here i mentioned the csv export there before we tap on that and we can then uh, copy a link and we can then export that uh, down to a CSV file and then start doing stuff with Microsoft Excel or something along those lines. And you could potentially take that CSV data and feed it into Grafana. I've spoken about Grafana before. Uh, and the last thing in the bottom right hand corner here is messages and there's things like, you know, welcome. When you first sign up, there's a, an installation form that you need to sign. Uh, and you can also leave a review for the installer. So having now looked at the app, it's time for some final thoughts. The PowerPal unit has some serious potential and if you're not using rooftop solar, I think it's a great way to get an idea of your power usage and some tips for saving money on your bill. It's even better if you're in Victoria and can get the unit for a zero dollar outlay. If you do have a solar array, it is a little bit hamstrung. Because of the fact that it's only ever going to show you the consumption, you can't tell how much you're feeding back into the grid. And that's a really important metric for anyone with rooftop solar. It might help you to find any appliances when you run them that could be pushing your energy consumption over that equilibrium point during daylight hours if you are using a solar system, but I'm not really convinced that it's the right option if you've got or if you're planning to get a solar array. The requirement to connect to a phone over Bluetooth low energy is a pain as well. I can't even connect to the power pal at all if I'm sitting here in the dining room or over on the lounge. And the dining room and the lounge are at the back of my house and the connectivity isn't super reliable unless I'm in the bedroom with the meter box right on the other side of the wall. And I'm telling you now, my house isn't that big either at roughly 250 square meters. So this also means that if you wanted to check your power consumption when you're not at home, you're out of luck. I mean, sure, you can look at the historical data when you get back in range, but part of the point of these kinds of energy monitoring solutions should be to make better decisions in as close to real time as possible. So my recommendation is that if your state government is giving one of these away for free, then by all means, Sign up for the free unit and installation as it's still going to provide you with some very useful data to start making better decisions about how you use your energy. On top of that, if you don't already have rooftop solar but you are considering getting solar installed, and in my opinion you absolutely should be thinking about getting solar installed, it may also be useful for properly scaling your solar or battery system. If, however, you are not able to get a subsidy for the installation of one of these units 
and you've got a solar array, I'm not convinced that it is worth the $130 outlay. And if your smart meter and electricity distributor supports it, you would definitely be better off with something like the Eagle 200 by Rainforest. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. Or you could definitely look into another whole home energy monitoring solution. And we might even be taking a look at some whole home energy monitoring solutions in a future video. Unfortunately, many of those solutions do require an electrician to install them. So the likelihood is that we may need to just do kind of a paper-based discussion about those. That's all we have for this video. And I do hope that it helped you in your home automation and energy consumption optimization journey. Do you think I got it right or wrong? Be sure to comment down below with your thoughts and any home automation ideas that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and those links are in the video description as well. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like, and if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you're looking for a VPN provider, I've also placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they have the best infrastructure that I've seen from any VPN provider. A strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you're not in the market for a VPN, but you still want to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions made through the buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.